Hello, welcome to chapter six, section three, the properties of bonds. So we just learned about the difference between an ionic bond and a covalent bond. And now we've kind of got to learn about um, what that kind of means to them. We're going to start by looking at metallic bonds. Now, metals are kind of weird in that they kind of all share electrons with each other. Um, and this allows for most of the metallic properties. So if you can see in this picture here, you can see that, that there's, there's copper in the middle and all of the outside electrons in the copper don't just belong to this one copper. They're kind of shared among all of the copper. And this means that um, when you want to send an electric current through it or heat through it or something like that, the, it all goes from electron to electron. It doesn't have to go from this atom to this atom to this atom because that takes time. That's why metals are such good conductors of heat and electricity because it just zips right on through just that layer of electrons. It just goes straight through there. Um, the atoms can also kind of slide past each other pretty easily, which means, which is why it's it's easily shaped or pulled into a wire. They can they can move around because the outside electrons. It's not a rigid thing where this electron has to be right there. It's that it's that okay. They're you know they just kind of they can kind of go where they need to go. Not very easily because metal is still strong, but um, but you can ma manipulate it. And it's because of this electron setup, and it's just with metals. And some metals do it better than others, and you can tell because those are the metals that are good at conducting electricity and conducting heat, and, and they can easily be bent. So, so all of that. Then we have the properties that are specific to ionic compounds. Now, most ionic compounds are solid at room temperature, like salt. Um, they have extremely high melting and boiling points. Melting salt, you need it really hot. Um, it takes a lot of energy to break all the bonds among all the ions in the crystal. That's what you have to do in order to make it a liquid is break all those bonds. So you need a lot of energy to do that. So it's a really high heat level that you need to melt things. They have a really rigid crystal network, and you knew that. And it makes ionic solids really brittle. It makes them really hard. Um, brittle, rigid, that means it's, um, it, if you can break it, um, but they're not going to bend a lot. That's what brittle is. Um, poor conductors of electricity, because their ions are exactly where those ions need to be, there's not a lot of play in there, so you, you can't electrocute yourself with salt. You just can't. <laughs> also, they dissolve easily in water um, because in water, which is polar, you can easily separate the positive and the negative ions in water, which has positive and negative sides. The solution in water makes a really great conductor. So if you dissolve salt in water, now you can conduct, conduct electricity through the water because all of the positive and negative um, atoms can now ions can now line up exactly the way they need to because they're not in that rigid crystal structure anymore. Um, this is good because your body does this all the time. Your body uses ionic compounds to help transmit nerve and muscle impulses. And this is why sports drinks have ionic compounds in them so that it helps your body replenish those so that your body can continue to send those messages to the muscles that say go, go, go. And your muscles can keep working because they've got all of these great ionic compounds that transmit the messages really quickly. Covalent properties. Now these atoms are individual molecules. They're not grouped crystals. They're just molecules all thrown together in any direction that happens to fit. Um, the melting and the boiling points don't require breaking any chemical bonds. So they're lower. They're, you don't need all of the energy, all of the heat in order to, to, to break apart any crystals. They're just hanging out together. 
Now, in the same regard, though, the solutions, if you dissolve this in water, um, they don't conduct electricity because the molecules stay together, whereas the ionics, um, they break apart into sodium and chlorine. And so, and so they've got a positive and a negative charge. There are no charges in your water, so they don't separate into ions, so they don't conduct electricity. So when you make a covalent solution, you're not going to be able to conduct electricity through it. The bond shapes are interesting. Um, the covalent bonds aren't as structured as the ionic bonds, so they can take different shapes, and you can actually use this to your advantage sometimes because the different shapes mean different properties. And we're going to use carbon as an example. One form of carbon is graphite, and that's the um, pencil lead graphite. Okay? Now, this is really soft. You can squish it around, and it actually, you know, layers of it come off on your paper. Now, this is because the, when the carbon bonds together in, in, for graphite, it bonds in the, a specific way that, that m gives it layers. And you can see the different layers in this picture here. And it's those layers that rub off and get left behind on the paper or your fingers or whatever it is you're trying to write on, hopefully not your friends. And um, I'm rubbing my forehead because I don't want to fight on it. <laughs> um, they fit together, they lock together, but they rub off easily. Each layer rubs off easily. Now, if you rearrange the carbon atoms, you have a medium level bond structure. And these kind of lock together a little bit, but not quite as much, and I don't have a picture of it. Um, uh, so it's kind of, a, as far as hardness goes, if you remember your sixth grade, um, hardness is how hard it is to scratch something. Um, so coal has a medium hardness. And then you have diamond, which is also pure carbon. So it's those carbon atoms, but the question is, how do they connect together? And here, this is the crystal structure of a carbon atom. And you can see it's all triangular, and it's got these things shooting out the edges, and these things lock together. And so it locks together so well and so completely that it is the hardest substance on the planet. So um, covalent bond shapes you can kind of make a generalization about ionic bonds, but covalent bonds, it really depends on the type of bond and the shape of the, of the molecule as to how strong the bond is actually going to be. Okay, I think that's it. Have a lovely day. Thank you very much. See you next time.